This video will show you how to switch between cameras if you have more than one and how to use the camera preferences menu. For timestamps on specific sections, please refer to the text description below. To access the camera menu, press the camera preferences button in the image window, or you can go to the spaceship looking icon in the middle of your screen under preferences. So the top of the camera preferences menu allows you to choose between the different cameras that you have if you have more than one. On this microscope, we have a DFC 9000 and the DMC 6200. So we're going to start with the DFC 9000, which is our fluorescence or monochrome camera. Going from left to right, top to bottom, you can go into easy mode, which I don't really recommend for most users. The next option is to set the digitization mode between 8, 12, and 16 bits. Your camera may vary. Next is our quality mode. In the quality mode for the DFC 9000, you can choose between low noise or fast readout. Every DFC 9000 camera comes with a spec sheet, and sometimes the difference between low noise and faster readout is substantial, in which case you would select the best mode for you. Other times, there's a very little difference in terms of the quality between low noise and faster readout. If there is no big difference between the two, then I would always choose fast readout for the increased speed. Under image flip, we can flip the image that's projected onto our camera chip. We will talk about this more in another video on how to align your camera. Next is enable camera profiles. This will allow you to save camera configurations if you have multiple users or different settings that you want to save. Under C mount adapter, it looks like you can choose between different options, but this is actually programmed already in the hardware configurator. And finally, we have advanced camera features. If you check this box, it will enable the camera features to show up under image. So right now you can see there's no advanced features. If I check this box, it now appears in the image window. So let's close this and let's look at our advanced features on this camera. We can choose between high dynamic range, which is similar to the digital cameras that you have on your phone, allowing you to take images that have really high and really low intensities in the same image. The next option here is shutter mode, and on this SCMOS camera, you have the choice of rolling shutter or global reset. Finally, there is the image streaming option. This is probably the most useful feature for those doing time lapse, as it allows you to quickly stream in real time images from the microscope to your camera. The next option that I want to discuss is changing between 12 bit and 16 bit on the DFC 9000. So this feature is extremely specific for the DFC 9000, which has a dual amplifier. To demonstrate this feature, the first thing I'm going to do is take an image in 16 bit mode. You can see the gain list and it shows you only one option of low noise and high well. Let's take a sample image of a kidney cross section in the green channel. So to get a good image, I have to set the exposure around 100 milliseconds with the intensity at 75%. Now let's switch to 12 bit mode. So I go to my camera preferences, sw switch the digitization to 12 bit. Now you see there are two options under gain list. One is high well capacity and low noise. So the difference between the two is a little bit counterintuitive. You use high well capacity when you have a lot of photons. For instance, when you are imaging bright field or extremely bright fluorescence. Now the secret sauce in this camera is that you can go to low noise and access a very low signal high gain mode. So let's switch to low noise. And now you can see that I've completely saturated. I can actually switch the exposure to 10 milliseconds and I'm still saturating, which I can tell by turning on my over under exposure. And now I can turn my intensity of light down to 21%. You can imagine how much gentler and faster this would be for your imaging experiments to be able to image in low noise. Now let's switch to the color camera. On this microscope, we have a DMC 6200. So let's go under camera preferences, switch to DMC 6200. And you can see that we have a lot of the same options that we had before with the DFC 9000. One of the main differences here is we can enable color channels, which will basically split red, green, blue into individual channels as opposed to having them in one image. Under the image window, we have a couple of different options. Because this is a CCD camera, we have different formats available to us 
We have two options, the live format and the image format. This allows for different speeds for live imaging, usually lower resolution. Then we can switch to a higher resolution for the final image acquisition. For this camera, the highest resolution is a 36 shot, 20.7 megapixel image. This is for your true high fidelity color images, but realize that this also takes quite a bit of time. So usually you wanna consider the trade-offs of this option. With this camera, we can also change the gain. Usually, I recommend that this number be as close to one as possible. Definitely for bright field images, you don't need to turn the gain up. However, if you are doing fluorescence imaging, you may need to up this gain by quite a bit. And always remember, if you up the gain, you also increase your noise. At the bottom of this window, we can choose between color and black and white mode. You can choose black and white mode if you're doing fluorescent imaging on a color camera and you want it to appear as monochrome just for the sake of simplicity, as you can apply a lookup table. Under the color control panel, which you can access through this, these three little dots, we can adjust each RGB channel level specifically. We can also apply a white balance to the whole image and adjust the saturation. Now let's go live to look at how these color controls affect our image. So you can see my RGB levels are set to 1, which is not correct. Um, and you can see that the image looks very strange. So let's go ahead and reset our color panel. This looks a lot better. Um, in this color control window, we can also adjust the white balance. So that will apply a white balance to your full image. We want to set the white balance to a blank area. So to do that, we can go to this little draw rectangle tool, select a blank area. When we let go of the square, this menu will pop up and we can click white balance. So if it doesn't work, it might be useful to go to another region and select a bigger area. Or to adjust your illumination settings, sometimes it's too bright. There, that's better. So at the bottom of this color control, we can adjust the saturation. So you can intuit how that works. So on some occasions, people accidentally set the saturation to zero in which it appears monochrome. So I would put this at 50 as the default. Now let's look at our advanced settings. Like the other camera, we also have the ability to go into high dynamic range. We can average, there's black balance, that's usually used for fluorescence imaging, sharpening, and color temperature. And again, this is specific for the 6200. You can choose between different color temperatures for your imaging.